Hey everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 11th E2 tutorial. Uh, we're going to be finishing up on models. And if you've kind of gone over the E framework 2.0 API, you know there's a lot to models, a lot more than we've actually covered, and probably a lot more than we will cover. But we're going to get into some of the more advanced stuff in this tutorial. So what we're going to be covering is how to make your own custom model and how to do validation. And I would encourage you to go out and read the definitive Definitive Guide to Yi 2.0. While I said at the beginning of this tutorial series, it's not even remotely finished, but it does have some really good information, especially when it comes to models. Um, like we also said that models are kind of the core of any model view controller framework. So we're going to dive right in here. Now, two things should become very apparent. There's two different types of models. Like if we crack open accounts, something that we've generated, it's extends or inherits the EDB active record, meaning this thing goes back to a database. But this login form, which was pre-generated for us, you can see it just extends model, meaning it does not go back to a database. So when we look at this login form, you see there's all these rules and you know different functions and stuff that you can put in models. So that's really what we're going to be covering today. We're going to actually build our own so we're just going to go model new PHP file. We're going to call this join form. And we're just going to make like a generic form so that if someone was going to join our website, this is what we'd use. Namespace app slash models. And we're going to use ye. And I could probably just copy and paste a lot of this from the other file, but I just really want to do it this way because why not? base and we're doing model all right so I'm going to make our class here so we're just going to extend the model here and we really don't need that ye base right here we just say extends model so that in a nutshell is how you make a basic model. You just literally extend model and you obviously you know, inherit everything that the model class has. But now we want to add some properties here. So we're going to say public. I'm going to say email, public, password, whoopsie, public, repeat. Repert, that's not even a word, repert. All right, so if we compare this to our accounts, which is, you know, obviously an active record, you see how they've got them up here. This was auto generated based off the database table. So, what, you know, they're doing is they're making these variables um, similar to just, you know, like automatically generating them based off the database and then holding them in memory. We're just actually creating them right here. And this is actually this property uh, flag. This tells it that this is, you know, something that the class has. We don't need to do that because we're building it right into the class. All right, so we've got email, we have password, and we have repeat. And this is going to be like a basic join form where you'll have literally email, enter your password, then repeat your password. And we're going to bake all that logic right into the model so that you don't have to write any code really beyond this model. So we're going to say public function rules and here we're going to have the actual rules of the model itself and this is where it gets a little confusing but just bear with me here we're going to say return and of course we're returning an array so the first thing we need to do is we need to tell it what fields are required well we want email pretty much all our fields are going to be required password and repeat so we've got our array now we need to give it a validator as it's called whoops yeah derp there we go so what this is really saying is um, we have an array and the array are just these properties up here and each one of those is going to be required because that's the rule that we're putting on there. 
Now we're going to make another one, and we're going to say that the password is a string, meaning it has to be a string, can't be anything other than a string. And its property min is going to be 5, meaning it has to be at least 5 characters long. And if you're wondering, where am I pulling these magic you know, properties from? Well, you can go out to the e-documentation. You can read about validating input. And the reason why we would do this is anytime a user enters input into our website, we need to validate that. Um, if you don't, you leave yourself open to all sorts of really nasty attacks, such as you know SQL injection or buffer overflows, things like that. That's actually how a lot of websites really get infected, is they just do no user input validation. So E is going to take care of all of that for us under the hood. We don't have to write any real logic to do it. It just knows what we want it to do because we're giving it these properties. Then we want to do some magic here with email. So we're going to say email. We're going to give it a filter. This is a new term for you. Um, filter basically says this is what we're going to do to the information. And we're going to say the filter is trim meaning it's going to automatically take the email and trim it. Now what trimming does is it gets rid of any white space. So if they say, you know, space email at blah 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 dot com space space space, it's going to trim out all that white space. So you don't have to do that at all. It does it automatically. Now this one's actually pretty killer. I like this. It's one of my favorite. We're going to say email and we're going to give it another one. We're going to call it unique meaning this has to be unique in a specific and we're going to say target class if I can spell target class and now what we're doing here is we're just giving it a uh, an actual path to a model here If I can spell models, counts, and if you're wondering if I have all this memorized, no, I don't. I actually have notes that I'm kind of looking at as we go. There's no way you can memorize all this. Well, if you do memorize all this, maybe you need a hobby, like, you know, go outside, do something with your dog, maybe, you know, mow the lawn, meet the neighbors. I'm sure they're nice people which ironically I really don't even know my neighbors so I shouldn't say that. Alright, so, and we're going to explain all this in a minute. Whew. Now if that looks long, it's because it is long and it actually you know goes around to the next line here. So basically what we're saying is the email attribute has to be unique. The target class is app models accounts, so we're saying this accounts class Yep, our database record basically and the target attribute has to be email now if we look at the accounts class in our database you notice that one of the properties in the database is email so we're basically saying um, select star from accounts where email equals whatever the user just entered um, and if it exists then we're gonna pop back a message saying hey this already exists I think my girlfriend's arguing with a cat in the background I can hear her don't know what she's doing. All right, so now we're going to work with the repeat attribute because remember we've got email, password, and repeat. So we've already done password up here. And actually, let me pull it down here. That way, it's a little more, a little more streamlined, and we can tell what's going on here. So we're saying our email, password, and repeat are required. Everything's required. Then we're going to filter the email using trim. And then we're going to use a validator called unique, which is going to verify that that has not been used before. The password is a string, minimum of five. Now repeat, this is a little bit different. We want to do a comparison, so we're going to say compare. And we're going to say compare. Compare attribute to, you guessed it, password. 
So what we're really doing here is we're saying, hey, this thing has to equal our password. If it doesn't, then we're going to say, give it a message. I say passwords must match. All right, so there's a lot there. I'm gonna kind of scroll over here so you can really see this. So we're gonna say repeat is going to compare to password. And if it does not compare, then it's just gonna say the message is password. I'm gonna say passwords must match. Now, if you think about just the logistics of what we're doing here, we're actually telling you to write all this code for us and we're not really writing any code we're just handing it an array but all of this is being done for us so we don't have to mess with any of it it's pretty slick actually and then we're going to do public function we're going to say attribute labels we don't want to include the parent attribute labels let's get rid of that And we're going to return, of course, an array. Almost everything you use an array, so get used to it. And we're going to say email. And I just like doing this just because, um, in case I want to come back later and change, you know, like if the if I'm doing like a website for a client, and they go, well, I really I don't want it to say email. I want it to say, you know into your logistical address or some nonsense. I can just do it right here. And this is, you know, these are the attribute labels. So when we build a form, it's going to pick these up and use these as the label instead of the actual field names. Whew. Interesting, huh? All right, so let's go into our site controller here. And we're going to make a new action. Make sure I don't have any squirrely logic in here. It's going to really mess me up because I know we played with this a little bit here. Merge post, okay, good. So we're going to I'm going to make an action join. And we are going to return this render join. And before we forget, let's go down into views. Actually, let's not. Let's do this instead. Let's go into here. And do I have GI up? Yes. In GI, um, you remember how to get to GI. You just type GII -I in your route. Um, you have a bunch of things, but one of them is a form generator here. And we're going to just say site slash join. And models equals join form. I'll preview this bad boy. And you can actually see the code that it's going to generate here. And this will very quickly generate that form for us. So we don't have to really write any of this code. It's just going to say, whoop, there you go. So I'm going to actually make sure that's select create. We're going to generate that. Go back out to our website. Make sure that uh, site actually made join. And there's the form that we just generated here. All right. So... Now we want to actually pass the model to it. And this is kind of a little tricky here. You see how in our form that we generated, it has this model variable. And it's got these other variables. It's got a form. It's got a this. Well, model is actually app models join form. So what we need to do is actually, well, create that and then pass it to it. So we're going to go into our site controller here. And we're going to say model equal new join form and notice how it puts the full path because we haven't included it in the users up top here and now we need to pass this model to the actual view so we're going to say oops give it an array remember everything is an array model let me move my mouse so you can see what's going on here so really all we're doing is we're saying this render, so we're going to render that view, the join view, which is the form that we auto-generated via GI. 
which I'm not sure if this is going to work without any modifications. We're going to find out the hard way. And we're going to take this model and pass it as a variable called model. We could call this, you know, fuzzy bunny slippers if we wanted to. But, you know, I like keeping things, you know, pretty simple. So model is going to be named model. And just as a test, let's go out to our site. All right, so let's say... And we want join. All right, so there is our model that has been displayed via the form. And if we just type some random gibberish in here, you can see how it validates some things and not others. So you can see the password cannot be blank, et cetera, et cetera. So if we do test, hmm. let me look back at our logic here. There's a reason why this isn't working. See, it should actually validate that it's not an email address. So let's jump back in here. I think I missed something. I had what we professionally call a boo-boo. Yes, we have a boo-boo. We forgot to put something in here. We're going to say email, and we're going to put a validator on here. That email has to be an email. And there's some fancier stuff that you can do, like you can actually make it go out and talk to the email server to validate that it actually is a valid web server and all this fun stuff. But it's not really tried and true, especially when you get into like uh, SMTP forwarding and things like that. It gets kind of messed up. So we're going to refresh our page here and we're going to see email is not a valid email address. Think of the logistics of that. We just wrote a bunch of code in the background to determine whether or not this is like test at voidrealms.com. See, if we do this, it'll say, hey, whoops. Now it'll say, hey, it is a valid email address. But if I take that dot .com out, you know, because a lot of people just like to put an at symbol in there, not valid. And then passwords, you know, password cannot be blank. Repeat cannot be blank. If we do this and we do that, notice how they're different. It'll say passwords must match. So, you know, there's all sorts of interesting goodness going on here. And we're going to go back here, and we're going to play around, massage this form a little bit here, because I'm not overly thrilled with it just yet. Hmm. Well, first thing first here, let's actually do this. We're going to say form field, password input. So we're going to actually mask that password so they can't see it being typed. And let's see if there's anything else I really want. Yeah, you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to go open login.php. And you notice how in the login form, it actually has all this right here. What this is, is it actually makes a templated parameter. And we're going to flip back to join. See how it just says begin? We're going to just copy and paste that array right in there. And what this will do is it actually says, you know, field config template. And then it has this div template that we're using. So when we flip back here, you see how it's like taking up the entire page? Well, if we just refresh it, now it does this. So just be aware that that exists, and that's kind of how you manage that. And you can pretty much put just about any sort of template you want in there. You just have to be mindful of this, you know, bracket, label, in bracket, and then this bracket, input, in bracket, um, and then the error right here. But you can put pretty much anything you want here. So you can make, you know, one one div red and one float over the other and move around the screen and all sorts of crazy nonsense. Now, when we go back here, you see how it says repeat password and that wraps? Well, let's say this is for a customer and the customer goes, well, I don't like the way that wraps. Just make it say repeat. Or actually, let's make it say hmm, try again. So we're going to go back out to our model here, our join form, and we're just going to say... What did we say? Try again, which is kind of misleading, but we'll enter try again. And then when they update, ta-da, it says try again. And we have all that logic in there, and it won't submit until all of these are done, meaning they all are green, meaning they validated. So one thing that this model will do, because it's a model, is it will validate. It will not, however, save, meaning you cannot go out here and say, model save 
see how you know even IntelliSense is going to tell you, hey buddy, that ain't going to work. Let's actually try it just to see. I've actually never tried this. Let's just do it. See what's going to happen here. I got a dollar says, yeah, Lee's just going to explode. See, this is like when you give your cat way too much catnip. It just says, nope, not happening. So, and that's because it's not an active form, it's just a model. So what we want to do here is we want to, well, first off, make sure that this thing validates. So I say if my girlfriend bought me this, this chair for Valentine's Day, it's like the most comfortable thing ever. It's like my butt is so happy right now. All right, so we're going to load this bad boy. So what are we going to load? Well, we're going to load the the request basically. So we're going to say ye app request and we're going to load the post data out of the request. Oops, it's not a function. What am I thinking? So if we can load that post And we could even go a step further here and put all this on one, but you know what? We'll just break it out just so it's obvious what's going on here. save here meaning this is where we would actually do something with that data right otherwise we're gonna say ye warning maybe warning really oh, probably help if I did the other colon er. all right Alright, so basically this is like a template, so if you were actually doing this, what you would do here, where it says save here, and I'm just going to comment this out because we don't want to actually do this, but you would say like account equal new accounts, and then you would say account you know, email equal model email, Let's just put that, and then, you know, same thing with password, et cetera, et cetera, whatever field you wanted. And then you would say, you know, account validate. And this would obviously be within an if-then statement. And then account save. And that's hopefully going to answer some emails that I'll get of, well, how would I actually save that data? That's how you would really do that. You would make a new instance of your active form model, the account, where'd you go? Or accounts, sorry. You'd make a new instance of this, and then you would populate it from the other model. So you'd say email, password, and then you would do whatever you wanted here. And then you would validate and save this down to the database. So let's see that. And we're just going to show this in action. Um, if it doesn't validate, we will, you know, see the issues with the model. If it does validate, we'll see save here in the log. Um, and typically, this is also where you would do like a uh, this. Whoops. Yeah, let's see. actually it's a return this dot redirect. And don't worry, we'll be going over this sort of stuff in future tutorials. I just wanted to kind of, you know, show you. Because I know whenever I do one of these, everybody goes, well, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? Well, that's you know kind of the basics of it here. But really, I just wanted to focus on how to build a, you know, a model from scratch and how to control it. So we're going to make sure this goes back the way it's supposed to. I'm going to say, da 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 See, it won't even submit, right? So we're going to say, and test at void realms is not an actual email address. So if you email that, it's probably going to bounce back. We're just going to say, Yeah. Make sure they match. There we go. And we'll check our log. And see, save here. Now, in 
real life, you're probably never going to see this, you know, issues with the model because the validation is happening before you even do this post back. But it's always good practice to do that just in case somebody tries to slip something in. Um, you know, like they try to do a SQL injection attack or something like that. It'll not validate correctly most of the time. I say most of the time because there's always ways around things. So um, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this kind of educational and entertaining. And uh, let's see here. You can read more about creating forms in the definitive guide to E2.0, which is out on Yee's uh, website. And for other tutorials, also visit my website, voidrealms.com. Um, this is run 100% off your donations, so if you're feeling kind of rich, feel free to donate. Um, otherwise, uh, be sure to join the Void Realms Facebook group. We just breached over 400 plus developers in there, so it's getting kind of crazy. We got a lot of good conversations going on there, all different languages like, you know, PHP with Yee, C++, Python. I think there's a couple of pro folks in there, some embedded folks. It's kind of crazy. All right, that's it.